Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about converting complex numbers to polar form, which looks like R cis theta, um, the way that I like to write it. So uh, let's see what this is all about. So we're gonna start with a complex number. They're usually called Z equal, so Z sub one, Z sub two. I don't exactly know why they use Z, but they pretty much always do. Um, in rectangular form, it's A plus B I. And what we wanna do is we wanna turn that into polar form or trig form, you'll sometimes hear it called. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by actually plotting this. So when you plot a complex number, um, the horizontal axis is the real part, and then the vertical becomes the imaginary part. So we actually look at it as an ordered pair, just A comma B. So notice there's no I there. Uh, I is the vertical axis, um, so it's just A, B. And then from there, we can uh, find the distance to the origin, and we're gonna call that R like we do in a lot of contexts. And R is still gonna be the square root of A squared plus B squared. So uh, we're just using the distance formula, or if you recently studied vectors, it's like the magnitude of a vector. So this is the distance of the origin. So it's actually the absolute value of that complex number. So we can call it the absolute value of Z. Um, it also has a name uh, and the name is the modulus. So you'll hear it called uh, R, the absolute value of Z or the modulus. So you gotta know all of the, uh, the vocabulary that goes with it so that you know how to answer questions when it comes up. So the next thing we wanna do is uh, figure out an angle, right? So uh, if we do the thing we usually do, we go from the positive X axis, which is just the positive real axis in this case, I'm gonna call that theta, but really uh, because of different quadrants, I'm gonna think of it as theta prime and I'm gonna calculate that the way that I've always calculated angles. So theta prime is our reference angle. So it's the inverse tangent of the absolute value of B over A. And then what you do is uh, after you find the reference angle, you just fix the quadrant. So you might do like pi minus that, pi plus that, two pi minus that, um, whatever you need to get into the correct quadrant. And this is also called the argument. So uh, there are no restrictions on the argument. Like it could be uh, any angle like any angle, so it could be 10 degrees, 370 degrees, you can go bigger than uh, 360. You could do everything in radians, which is what I'm gonna do in this problem, or in this video, I should say. Uh, okay, so we got a modulus, which is the absolute value, the distance from the origin. We have an argument, which is just the angle. So I should clarify, theta is the angle. Uh, theta prime is just the reference angle. And now what we wanna do is actually start converting this. So if we go back to our picture, I'm gonna add that, uh, so the horizontal segment there, which is in green, and then this vertical segment in, uh, I don't know, like light purple, um, and it's a right triangle. And so you've probably done this several times if you're taking a trig class. Um, we're gonna say that the cosine of theta is just uh, the x coordinate of that point, or a in this case, divided by the radius. And that means we can rearrange it and say that a is r times cosine of theta. And then uh, sine of theta in the same triangle is going to be the y coordinate or b divided by r. And we can rearrange that. So b is r sine of theta. And then uh, the reason we wanna do this is if we go back to our complex number, z is equal to a plus b i. So we have z is equal to a plus b i. We actually just figured out substitutions we can make for a and b. So. Uh, a, for example, is r cosine theta. And then it'll be plus b is r sine theta. So r sine theta, and then times i. And then if you look at it, they both have an r in them, so it's pretty common to factor the r out. And then you get r the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta. So usually you rearrange that. Uh, if you've done a lot of stuff with trig, you might recognize cosine theta plus i sine theta is Euler's formula. I'm not gonna use that in this video, but that is definitely a valid thing, and you will see it used from time to time. Uh, what I will do in this video, though, is I will say that uh, no one likes writing r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta, so what people often do is they abbreviate it this way, r cis theta, and so I'm kind of like color coding that as I go through. You have to remember that cis stands for cosine plus i sine. Well, specifically, cosine theta plus i sine theta. So you have to remember that theta goes with both trig functions and that it's plus in between them. So cosine theta plus i sine theta. All right, now what I'm gonna do is a bunch of examples. So if we have 
z equals five minus three i. So to figure out r, I pretty much just dive in with the formula. So five squared plus quantity negative three squared. So that's gonna be radical 34, which actually uh, three five radical 34 comes up a ton. Like you might actually just have that memorized at this point. Uh, but anyway, you can show the work for sure. And then to find the angle, I almost always just plot it and kind of think about it, right? So there's five and then down three. And then if I draw this, uh, so now in my mind, I can think like, all right, my reference angle is definitely the inverse tangent of three over five, right? Absolute value of negative three over five, but I'm just writing three over five. Uh, if I approach the angle this way, then I'm in the fourth quadrant. So I want to find my angle by doing two pi minus the reference angle, which would give me this angle, which means that I can write my complex number. So it's going to be R radical 34, and then cis, and then this angle that I just found. So two pi minus arctan of three fifths. Okay, but you're probably thinking like, that's not even an efficient way to get there. I probably should have just gone clockwise. So you might've chosen to go this way. So our reference angle is still the arctan of three fifths. But in this case, I'm just gonna do negative arctan of three fifths, negative inverse tangent of three fifths. Um, and those are coterminal, right? Two pi minus arctan of three fifths and then negative arctan of three fifths. Any coterminal angle will actually work here, um, which is kind of a big deal. So if we write this, uh, it turns out that any angle that's coterminal with this will have worked. And that means that polar form is not unique. There's an infinite number of ways of writing a point in polar coordinates um, or in polar form or complex number in polar form. Um, and that's gonna be important as we do other types of things, specifically when we find roots of these numbers. So let's take a look at another example. We have z equals negative eight minus 15i. So here, don't forget, like you know a lot of things. You know the Pythagorean triples. In this case, I see eight, 15. So I immediately know that r is 17. And I knew that because of the Pythagorean triple. So don't forget things that you already know. Uh, I'm gonna graph this. It's down here in the third quadrant. Um, so I want my reference angle, inverse tangent of the absolute value of negative 15 over negative eight, which is just 15 over eight. Um, third quadrant, so I'm gonna do pi plus the reference angle to get the actual angle. So pi and then plus. And then I can actually write the complex number. So it's r, cis, and then this angle that we just found. So if you were gonna use a calculator on these, since I'm using pi, I would wanna be in radian mode. If I was using 180 or 360, then I'd wanna be in degree mode because um, the calculator has no idea what mode you want to be in unless you set the mode. Um, and there's really no reason uh, to use one versus the other, it just depends on the problem or the class that you're in. So I do wanna take a look at two more examples and those involve famous angles um, because these are very common. So for example, you might wanna convert uh, five root two minus five root two i. So I look at that and I think root two and root two seems very familiar. Uh, in fact, if I like divided everything by 10, I would have root two over two and negative root two over two, and that feels like a unit circle point. So what I'm gonna do, instead of dividing by 10, I'm gonna factor 10 out of everything, which is equivalent to dividing by 10. So it'll give me this, um, so I do that kind of thing all the time. If you've just done vectors, you probably did it a lot there when you're trying to find unit vectors. Uh, it's a really common thing to do, like look for unit circle points if you can find them. So once I get to this point, uh, I see the ordered pair root two over two, negative root two over two. And I know because I memorize it that that is seven pi over four, or you might prefer negative pi over four, doesn't make a difference. Um, but I'm pretty much done, right? Z is equal to 10 and then cis, the angle seven pi over four. Uh, and you can do these really quickly if you recognize the unit circle points. So hopefully you have all those memorized. Um, let's take a look at another one. So z is equal to negative root three over five plus one over five i. So I just focus on the numerator and I see uh, root three and a one. So root three over two and one half is definitely unit circle. Negative root three over two, one half, definitely unit circle. So I'm gonna try to make that happen. So first, because it looks a little unlike what I want it to look like. I'm just gonna take one fifth out of everything um, and get this. And now what I'm gonna do is 
I will factor two out of everything in the parentheses. So factoring is the same as dividing. So I took the two out, so it goes in the numerator, so I get two fifths, but then everything in parentheses is now over two. And if you just like work it out, those twos would cancel and you would be back at the original, which is ideal. So now I look for my unit circle point, negative root three over two, comma one half. I know that that is definitely five pi over six. Um, and that means I can rewrite this. So we get two fifths is five pi over six. So these two examples are super common. Like uh, I would say most of the complex numbers that you're gonna actually work with by hand are going to be uh, somehow related to unit circle angles. So one of the most important things you can do is make sure that you know the unit circle um, because uh, everything else you saw in the previous examples, the angles are really messy and there's just like not much you can do with them. These on the other hand are pretty nice angles and there's a lot of stuff you can do by hand. So you should expect to see these types of examples um, or problems, I guess I should say. Anyway, that's how we can convert from rectangular to polar form or trig form. A couple of examples. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.